So recently, Mark Rosewater, who is the main mouthpiece of Wizard of the Coast, said that my Christmas gift for all of you is a quote, in my 23 years of working on the game, I have never been more excited for a suite of Magic products than I am for 2019. Magic fans are in for an amazing year. Hashtag Wizard of the Coast staff. Now, of course, people say this every single year. Uh, the last time I remember Mark Rosewater saying this, we got into Kaladesh Standard, which was supposedly the most exciting standard set ever made. That turned out to be false. But nonetheless, I am very optimistic about 2019. I'm going to dish some information, I guess. Uh, so where I am, I have a few competitors in 2017 to 2018, early 2018. Uh, one of the competitors, Swords and Superheroes of Kingwood, they merged into like another Swords and Superheroes. Essentially, they left. So competitor one is now gone, completely gone. There was another place in the mall that did Pokemon, which obviously I carry Pokemon, and sold magic cards in the Darebrook Mall. That place has since bankrupt. Uh, I honestly didn't even realize it bankrupt until one day I went to look for it and it was replaced by uh, a store that sells women clothing for $4.99. So any article of women clothing that you want, you can go to that store and pay five dollars so that's what replaced this uh, place which would have pokemon on weekends i mean it was not a bad place at retro games and anime it, it resembles my place right like almost verbatim except it's in the mall so that place went belly up uh, game stops are in trouble uh, game stop is taking a beating financially not just your local game stop but most game stops because they used to buy used games and then they realized they were very bad at doing that because they kept buying fake games and they were reselling fake games. They don't really do, when I mean like used, I mean retro games because that's another area where I'm interested in. Now, you know, people download the games on the Switch. So why wait in line when you can download any game as soon as it goes live? There's no point, right? Like, why would you need a physical copy anymore? Now, I do like physical copies of certain things like anime. But I also understand that the majority of people are not my age and therefore they're younger and no one's going to buy a physical copy of Fortnite when they can download it for the Switch. All right, so that is number two. There used to be another place called Texas Battle Bunker and this was up near the Lowe's. Uh, that place bankrupt a few years ago, but I'm still going to mention it because it had a LAN computer site. So it was a place where you could go there and play video games. And then the other half of the store was a magic community. That place bankrupt. I'm mentioning it, Texas Battle Bunker, just for the fact that the uh, computer games, the land site and all of that stuff was actually uh, important for my next point. A eSport cafe opened up recently near my store. But I went there and they are just a cafe that watches esports. So let me repeat that again. There are no computers, there's no lands, there's none of this stuff for people. It's not like a gaming den that you would see in Japan or a. It wasn't like Texas Battle Bunker where half the store was relatively nice computers that people would rent per hour to play good games on. So uh, the other place, DNA Comics, which my friend sort of friend steve owns is has decided not to do magic anymore uh, they don't do pokemon to begin with they don't do magic they have just given up on magic in 2018 they did not have a single fnm pre-release or any event and actually it seems talking to their store managers that they will continue not to have magic due to the uh, wpn restrictions that they put up, place on them so they can still order magic cards, but they just don't carry it. So that leaves one place. Uh, one place left is Ed and Games. I do like the place. I did film there one time for the Black Lotus. I should have bought that. I, I mean, that's one of my biggest regrets. 
there was like a full power nine. There was a full power nine. And then there was like all this Arabian Nights, really valuable stuff that it's a once in a lifetime collection that you're, I'm not going to see that collection again. Uh, even if I had to pay more for it, yeah, I would probably buy the collection just to have it. Lots of alpha and beta cards. It, the video's on the channel. Uh, they're owned by two good guys. Or I think I've just met one of them. Uh, they like the game. They like the hobby store. But it's a very small location. Uh, when I mean small, if I had to guess, I would probably guess it's like 1,200 square feet. Maybe 1,500 square feet. So it's a very small, cramped space. And it cannot hold, for instance, like DNA Comics can hold 120, 150 people for a pre-release. This place cannot do that because it is too small. So what you have is you have a large Magic player base. And I know this is a large Magic player base because, duh, I'm part of the player base, right? And they are having problems buying Magic cards cheaply. Uh, and more to the point, they are having problems of actually hosting large events or even small events like FNM sometimes doesn't even launch. So that is the dynamics. I know this place where I live in. It's I call it humble. I know the H is sign and it's called humble, but whatever. I like to call it humble with an H. And that I'm very, very I think 2019 is going to be a very good year. Otherwise I wouldn't be as committed as I am. And I'm all in. Like in 2017-18, I was all in, but then disaster hit. Multiple things happened to uh, my main business, which uh, prevented me from funding it. So one of the main things about any magic store is you have to fund it. You have to have capital. You have to have cash flow. Without these two things, don't even open the store because you need to keep buying new product as it comes in. Like for instance, like I'm carrying a lot of the Guilds of Ravnica packs. Why, you know, I don't want Rivals of Ixlan or Aether Revolt. I mean, Aether Revolt is interesting because I think the pack itself is very valuable due to the uncommon. Fatal Puss as a uncommon in that, I mean, it just really makes it attractive to open packs at $2, right? Because it's an $8 uncommon. 2019 is going to be a tremendous year for most local game stores, mainly because I see the uptick already. I've mentioned it before. I think it's some combination of MTG Arena and going back to Ravnica. Ravnica has always been good. No matter how much I complain about it, it's always been good to the player base. And it's actually kind of a continued story. Like I don't follow, follow the lore at all. But I know like, oh, hey, this is the Gorgon sister. Oh, hey, this is that lieutenant. And it's interesting to see how the characters evolve, even if they're not playable. I feel like we, the first, you know, we go, we're going back to a Ravnica Allegiance. That's not going to be a bad set. I don't need to know too much about that set. I just need to know that we're in Ravnica and we get five more Shocklands. That's all you need to know. That's going to be a good set. Uh, value wise and playability wise we have shock lands with buddy lands again uh, we used to have that during original ravnica and original innistrad now you know we have we have that again and i'm very very optimistic that they didn't butcher it. like they haven't they have done a good job and i don't say that very often but when i do say it, you know it kind of means something because i'm very critical of certain components of wizards of the coast i can't levy criticism on the Ravnica block. I thought it was going to be terrible and very, very, very uh, banal. But it turns out they've creatively mastered, you know, it seems like it's old and new together. Dominaria was a relatively good set because for old Magic players like me, I, I enjoyed those sets. And MTG Arena, that's the big beast. You, this game will die. And it was dying before MTG Arena really caught on due to the fact that your player base, the majority of your player base, I believe, in a physical store should be under 18. The reason that is the case, they are the bloodline. Yes, they may not spend as much money. They maybe don't even have great allowances. Maybe they don't even work jobs. But that's how you get them hooked. You get them hooked on when they're younger. And then when they do have money, eventually, you know, it, it's a time gap, right? So once the 18 year old goes to college and graduates and makes some money and can make buy boxes instead of packs, that's what I'm predicting will happen a few years from now. 
I see a lot of younger kids and their parents come in and ask about magic now. It's caught me totally by surprise because I assume that the majority of the people who'd be interested, I mean, again, it might be the product. I'm not really selling singles, right? So maybe the more casual and franchise player is more interested in singles. But for the packs and stuff, I mean, they're just eating this up. They're eating up every pack. As soon as I buy a pack, it's gone. And it's a good feeling, but it also makes me believe that uh, with this younger generation, uh, they got addicted to it from MTG, or they got introduced, not addicted, from MTG Arena, watching, you know, probably Hearthstone player, to be quite honest. If I had to, so in marketing, I do something called like a customer funnel, and I have to predict, not predict, because I have the data and analytics, like how did, I, how did we get this particular customer? If I had to guess how we got like a 14 or 15 year old male, uh, interested in buying the, his first uh, magic pack, it would be he watched, he went on Twitch one day, he saw something that was, you know, streaming, uh, a Hearthstone player, and the Hearthstone player, let's say Yan Yuck, Andrew Yan Yuck, was talking about magic in some capacity, and then he watched an old video about magic from Yan Yuck, and then he played about Magic Arena, and then he said, you know what, this looks really fun, let me play it and then he played it and he understood how to do it because the game was easy enough for him to understand and more to the point he enjoyed playing it therefore he was like oh well you know i really want to you know own the physical cards either because an artwork or not everyone who plays mtg arena is going to want to own physical cards but a percentage of them will and that percentage is better than none, which is what I think Magic the Gathering Online was sending. So when you look at Magic the Gathering Online, it is absolutely a disgrace to the game. They need to just get rid of it. In my opinion, because if a younger person who's used to Fortnite, PUBG, all these uh, Minecraft, if he his first introduction is Magic the Gathering Online, he's never coming back. If his first introduction is MTG Arena, maybe he comes back, maybe he doesn't. But there's probably at least there is a non-0% chance that he will be invested in the card game and then the physical card game. So let me explain. A lot of you, uh, the, the funnel, the sales funnel of MTG Arena into the physical Magic card game. You might ask, why would a kid want to buy a physical Magic card game? Wouldn't he just keep on to the digital Yes, the majority of them will. I would probably say 60% of people who play MTG Arena and that was the first thing they're introduced to will never buy that many or will not spend a lot of money on physical Magic card games. But the other 40%, they're collectors. And if I'm a collector, so I know collector behavior. It's kind of borderline hoarding to just, oh, I'm, I made my collection complete. And there is something interesting about the Magic Card artwork itself, which is, so for these other games, Fire Emblem, uh, they have a card game, I buy the card game. It's very hard to buy. I think it's only in Japanese. So I can't read the card game, I cannot play the card game, I still buy it because I like the artwork. And the same I can say about uh, Fate Grand Order. Fate Grand Order now has a uh, figure game where you know you buy figures. And people will buy that. People will buy these figures. And that's the key here is not everyone has to go from arena to the card game, but some percentage of them will. And that percentage is actually better than 0%. So it's not that we suddenly got a 100% retention rate for the card game from the arena into the card game. It's some percentage rate of retention is better than none. And before we had Magic Arena, we had none. No one came from the digital component. There was no path. There was no conversion funnel which would deliver a younger adult who's interested in digital products into the card game, into the physical card game. Now there is. Uh, take example Pokemon. Pokemon, the majority of players don't even play the game. They just like opening packs and collecting and looking at the cards. I think that's the future of physical magic cards. And actually, I think that's not a bad future. 
Uh, I, th I think it's a very, very good future because people want to collect the magic cards just to own. You look at Pokemon, it's a very good model. People collect it, not because they play the game. Uh, I just have never played Pokemon even once since I got my new collection. Um, outside of, you know, my uh, co-workers and employees. Because I, I don't think I want to go to Pokemon League. I'm too old for that. That would be just too, I'm just too old for it. But I really enjoy opening packs and getting, you know, a super rare, hyper rare. And that's a really good rush. And that's the same for these kids. These kids are going to want to do that uh, when they grow up and even now. So I'm very optimistic about 2019. Uh, the reason I'm so optimistic is I already see the difference. I see such a big difference between end of 2018 compared to end of 2017. And then 2017 was horrible in my area for magic. Stores are going bankrupt. Stores were not doing magic anymore. Stores are cutting inventory. Uh, it was really bad. Um, I mean, as a percentage of stores that went belly up, two of them went belly up. We only had five stores at the time. Two went belly up. One of them decided not to do magic. Sorry, we only had four stores at the time. Well, Battle Bunker, let's call, let's call it five. We extend it a little bit. Three stores went belly up. One store stopped carrying magic. And the other store that does magic has a very small, like it's, even if they expanded and absorbed the entire player base, they couldn't fit them in the store because of the size of the store. So that was what 2017 slash early 2018 was like. Uh, here, I see expansion. I see people, I see parents buying these blister packs for stuffing stockers and things of that nature. And it's good. I mean, as long as the price, I can get my distribution prices under control at $2 a pack and $7 a Planeswalker deck, you, you can sell an infinite amount of those. Anyway, bye guys.